and these lecturers would be who you know didn't expect this and they'd be halfway through their talk and they'd be deriving some mathematical equation on the board and all of a sudden you'd hear this hello hello green 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 <laughs> dishwasher thank you yes yes <laughs> So I applied to universities, went and, and did lots of studying and got degrees in theoretical physics and then ended up um, in Cambridge. So you know, sat next to Hawking, you know, a couple of, a few days every week. I'd see wow. him you know, most days. And this was the guy who inspired me to study astrophysics. And here I am sat next to him in Cambridge, going to a seminar that he's he's attending. And, you know, he's my kind of, was almost my hero when I was growing up. So I went from being a you know, being someone reading his books to literally being sat next to him and working in the same department as him almost almost every day. He was quite a funny, a funny character. He was he had a really good kind of sense of humor as well. And so he would always he would occasionally give lectures to the department as well as giving public lectures in, in, in Cambridge. Um, and it was quite inspiring being kind of that close to this kind of huge, um, huge kind of huge figure in my life but yeah. also in, in the world do you, of theoretical physics do you remember any humorous anecdotes that stephen hawking would tell or just a moment that that stands out to you yeah there was always, always one funny one when i when i give lectures on on, on cruise ships about space i always tell this story because it's quite funny and it really did happen um every monday there would be a, a lecture called cosmology lunch it was held in the Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics in Cambridge, or DAMPT, as we called it, based on the uh, the acronym. And that was where all the math mathematicians, theoretical physicists would, would meet up. And every Monday at lunchtime at about 1 p.m., they would offer a free takeaway to anyone who came. And so all the PhD students and postdocs would go to this, partly for the lecture, but partly for the free lunch. Sometimes it was a Chinese, sometimes it was a curry, sometimes it was um, sushi, sometimes it was mm. kind of uh, um, burritos. And Hawking would always be there as well on Monday, so that was where I would see him um, almost every week. And so it's quite a big occasion. If you're a lecturer, you, you'd be invited to come to Cambridge and give a lecture to one of the senior departments, and Hawking was going to be there. So it was mostly big dogs that would get invited to, to give lectures at this cosmology lunch. And Hawking would also be having his, his food. So all the students would be eating their curry and Hawking was there and he had an assistant. So at the time in his life, he, he couldn't, he couldn't move his arms. And so he's, he was fed by yeah. his assistant. So his assistant would pick up a spoonful of curry and feed it to him. And at that time, his condition had deteriorated to the point where he, he couldn't click the button with his fingers anymore. So he had a small sensor, which monitored his, monitors his cheek. It was like down here. And every time he twitched his cheek, it would select a different bank of words from his uh, word bank machine and then he'd twitch again to select a word then twitch a third time to add mm. it and then he'd do the same thing again so normally he could add about one word per minute to his to what to his sentences that's why he was so slow for him to communicate but of course he would never switch off this machine and he was being fed his food and chewing it so he'd be twitching his cheek while eating his curry so random words would be selected from his word bank and then occasionally he'd, he'd twitch his cheek in such a way that whatever sentence he'd formed of random words would then get blurted out loud on his machine. And these lectures would be, you know, didn't expect this. And they'd be halfway through their talk and they'd be deriving some mathematical equation on the board. And all of a sudden you'd hear this, hello, hello, green, 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 green <laughs> dishwasher. Thank you. Yes, yes. And they kind of pause for a second and say, is everything OK, Professor Hawkey? And obviously he was fine and everybody else would giggle. And then somebody say, no, no, it's just uh, randomly his words coming out of his, uh, coming out of his machine. That's hilarious. But the first time you heard it, you're like, has, has, has Hawking come up with some kind of genius statement that, that, we've, that the secret to the universe is green, green, hello, hello, dishwasher. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's the secret to life in the universe. Yeah, like oh, all the <laughs> all the students are just frantically writing it down. They're like, this, this is this is what unifies physics with quantum mechanics and green green exactly this is like it. the unifying theory this absolutely and there was one there's one lecturer i remember who gave a really bad lecture it was just an equation of it was just a 45 minutes of just maths there was no he was really bad lecturing style he just wrote maths on the board and it was just slides full of maths after maths integration differentiation uh, it was just hard to follow it wasn't a very good talk at all boring as shit and even all the even all the professors by the end of it were like, oh, for God's sake, is, is it over yet? And he got to the end of this derivation. And I I thought this was deliberate, but I'm sure it was accidental. He got to the end of this horrible derivation after like 40 minutes. And he turned around and said, 
I hope that's clear for everyone. And then Hawking went, yes, perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'd like to think that was a random choice of words, but I think it was probably Hawking just kind of getting bored and deciding to, you know, deciding to have a laugh. So he had a good sense that, of humor, that, Professor Hawking. That's amazing. <laughs> and he, it's, it's the it's the best excuse to say anything because no one can really get mad at you. And if, if they do, you can just say, sorry, that's like... You know, my own version yeah. of voice box Tourette. Sometimes sometimes <laughs> I'm chewing my food and it just comes out in a in a perfect insult yeah. for the moment. And you know, some people exactly, some yeah. people I happen to align my insults more with others, but I I assure you it's completely random. <laughs> it's, it's entirely random, yeah, honest. <laughs> yeah. So I mean wor- working alongside Stephen Hawking and then, you know, being in his presence, you must have picked up on some habits or, or mindsets, including humor. Like I'm sure, you know, th- that can be such a big part of the way that you look at the world is w- what things you find funny. W- were there other things that you picked up on that, you know, once you realized it about him, it kind of made sense that he was so great, like so well known, just like things that he would do or styles of thinking, what he would say. So he would, um, he would, he didn't make many publications until too later on in his life, but he would often give kind of speeches and kind of colloquia and uh, seminars to both students on a, an astrophysics level, but also mostly to the general public at the time. And he was he was very good at inspiring people, you know, partly because of his what he did manage to achieve with his condition, but also partly because you know of, of his love for, for kind of thinking outside the box. And he published a load of really exciting and fascinating scientific reports on some of his ideas about things like black holes and galaxies and baby universes. Um, and the way that he would, the way that his books were written were very similar to the way that he would kind of talk and communicate uh, to his, his students. And, and he also and his audio book inspiring. must have just been absolutely fascinating because <laughs> you can't tell what's sarcastic and what's not. <laughs> exactly. And he had an interesting way of kind of viewing the universe. Yeah. You'd always think, you know, well, we don't know what's out there, so it's worth it's worth exploring it. And he was also of the go back to our previous topic. Hawking was definitely of the opinion that, you know, there was there was other life forms out there. But also, interestingly, he was convinced that humanity should leave Earth. Yeah, you know, he 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 decided that we were destined to leave Earth at some point to go off and explore the stars and to expand our base from this tiny planet orbiting around an average sun in one corner of our galaxy. Hawking thought this was just the first stage of humanity. We're a stage one civilization, so we're, we're, we're on our own planet. To get to the next stage, we've got to start branching out into other planets, firstly in our solar system, and then further afield, other worlds that we discover that are habitable in our galaxy. So he was a big proponent of that and was convinced that if humanity were to succeed, were to succeed, sorry, we must, must leave and go to another, another place. 